Tirstrup Lufthavn kl. 16.58. Et diskret og privat fly lander efter en non-stop flyvning fra Girona i Spanien. Et lille fly med en stor cykelrytter. Modtagelseskomiteen er på plads. Løbsarrangør Jesper Tikøb skal køre Armstrong, hustruen Christian plus en cykel og to reservehjul de godt 50 km fra lufthavnen til Hasten. Men først giver Tour de France-vinderen sig tid til at svare på spørgsmål. Hello. 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 Welcome, Welcome to, to Denmark. Denmark. How do you feel about being here? I feel great. I've never been. I was just saying I've never been to Denmark, so it's good to come for the first time. What do you expect from your very short stay here? I expect to suffer because I've not been uh, since the tour. You know, it's uh, my body at rest, stays at rest, and I haven't been training or haven't been really uh, focusing on much. So I'm sure the the race will be hard for me. Do you still have some uh, motivation to ride a bike? Yeah, <laughs> a little, <laughs> very little. <laughs> But uh, that's normal, you know, when you have a hard three weeks and so much pressure, and then the race is over and. Uh, ends up being a success. It's normal that the mind says, "Okay, now it's, it's time to take a little break." And uh, just trying to get through this this week here, where I do a few races. There will be some uh, 10, 15,000 people waiting for you in Hastings. Are you ready for the for the frenzy again? No, it's it's better to have people there. We like that motivates you as well. So, if, you know, if you showed up with low motivation and you had two people and the two dogs standing there, it wouldn't be that fun. So, <laughs> it's better to have a lot of people. En kort køretur, og så ankommer herre Fru Armstrong på koncepttryk i Hasten, der er kun lidt over en time til start. Den femdobbelte turvinder har ganske få officielle pligter i forbindelse med besøget i Danmark. En af dem er et interview i sponsorteltet. Og så er det ellers ud at varme op foran et gigant publikum. Klokken 19.15 er det klar til start. Fire dage efter sejren på Champs-Élysées er Armstrong klar på Hastenbakken i Østjylland. Et løb med en stor favorit og med en håndfuld outsidere. Blandt dem, der udset til at skulle true Lance Armstrong, de nuværende danske mestre, Nicky Sørensen, dansk mester på landevej, og Michael Blaustun, dansk mester på enkeltstart. Og ruten er næsten til at blive rundtosset af. 1400 meter midt i hasten med den dræbende og frygtede Søndergade, der stiger 7 procent. Stigningen kom lidt bag på Armstrong. Han havde fået at vide Tyler Hamilton, at ruten var flad. Men det vil være synd at sige, og der blev kørt hårdt fra starten af. Flere amatørrytterne skulle lige markere. Der blev kørt en time og derpå fem omgange. Bekim Christensen fra CRC forsøger at skabe sig et hul for øjnene af det rekordstore publikum. Men kort efter får han følgeskab af blandt andet Jørgen Jensen fra Gluder Marstrand og den norske mester Gabriel Rasch fra Team Rengerikke. Den femdobbelte Tour de France vinder Lance Armstrong lader dog ikke nogen stikke af i feltet. Og slet ikke fordi han er alene og uden hjælperyttere. Han var ene mand fra US Postal i dag. På det her tidspunkt ligger han i feltet, hvor vi kender ham. Feltet er samlet, og Armstrong ligger forrest. Så var det et af de store danske talenters tur til at forsøge sig. Brian Vandborg, bronzevinderen fra DM i enkeltstart, viser, hvorfor Bjarne Ries har så store øjne på ham i øjeblikket. Og Vandborg ligger alene i feltet og har på et tidspunkt 10 sekunder ned til det øvrige. Men han må konstatere ved at kigge sig tilbage, at tempoet er nærmest uhyggeligt. Alle ventede på, hvornår den gule trøje ville røre på sig for alvor. Men alle feltets øjne var rettet mod amerikaneren, og i stedet kommer en anden markant trøje ind i billedet. Nemlig den danske mester, Nicky Sørensen. Han blev nummer 44 i Tour de France i år, og sidste års nummer 20. Nicky Sørensen har deltaget en gang tidligere i Hastens cykelløb, og det begynder for alvor at ligne noget for ham. Han tager sekunder ned til feltet. Så har feltet kørt en time på rundstrækningen, og tilbage resterer der fem omgange. Nicky Sørensen forspring er på et tidspunkt 15 sekunder, men så bliver tempoet for alvor skruet i vejret, og Armstrong begynder at markere. Han ligger han forrest i feltet, men rører ikke på sig, da Søren Petersen fra Gluder Marstrand sætter et godt angreb ind ud på sidste omgang. Her er rytterne så for sidste gang på vej op ad Søndergade med Søren Petersen forrest, og det ligner en sikker stil. Men det er der åbenbart delte danske meninger om, for her træder Team Faktas Jakob Mo Rasmussen an i spurten til venstre i billedet. Og så er det noget opgivende attityder for Søren Petersen. Jakob Mo Rasmussen vinder foran Mati Brasiel fra Team PH, og så slutter Søren Petersen på tredjepladsen. Armstrong bliver femmer. Hard. Uh, I don't know how many, you know, you do the, that hill 30-40 times. 
stuff. It was nice race, nice people. The, the local guys, the Danish, they were they were flying. I think uh, special motivation. Everybody wanted to beat you. That must be the reason. Right? I don't know. I don't know. Probably. Uh, you know, it's maybe uh, any time a guy from the tour comes to the race. You know, the the local or domestic guys get special motivation. But hey, they were good and they deserved to win. They were strong. So, chapeau. But honestly, a harder race than, than you had expected? Yeah, 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 a lot harder. Like I said, Tyler told me it was flat. I think it was pulling my leg. You know, I, I don't feel very good after the tour. Um, everything's tired, the head, the legs, the back, the the lungs. So it's hard to get going again. Jakob, en sejr over Lance Armstrong her i Hasten. Hvad, hvad kan du bruge det til? Ja, men det viser jo, at jeg kunne have vundet turen, hvis jeg havde været med der. Ej, Pjat, um, det er selvfølgelig... Det er selvfølgelig en øh, stor oplevelse, og, og det er jo sjovt at, at kæmpe mod så stort et navn, fem dobbeltturvinder. Hvordan var det at køre sådan et løb her? Altså man kan sige, at den sportslige værdi er jo ikke så stor, men, men det er jo en oplevelse på andre områder. Jamen, det er fantastisk. Det er øh, klart det løb i Danmark, jeg nogensinde har været med i, hvor der har været så mange mennesker. Det slår næsten øh, opløbet på Frederiksberg lige i Danmark rundt, så det er jo helt fantastisk. Jeg har aldrig nogensinde set så mange mennesker, og, øh, og de rytter, det er jo øh, næsten verden til lige den der er med jo. Og det er en kæmpe oplevelse. For for sådan en ung en som mig. Det er det største, jeg har lavet øh, arbejdsmæssigt på eventområdet. Det er det største, jeg har lavet privat inden for min store passion, cykling. Så det er en rigtig stor dag for mig. Lance, først af alt, velkommen til Danmark. Det er din første visit her. Hvordan um, føler du at være tilbage i Skandinavien? Det har været en tid. Jeg ved, det har været... Jeg tror, det har været 10 år. 10 år siden jeg var her. Så det er godt at komme til nye steder. Nye spændende steder. Steder, hvor cykling er stort og stort. Different challenges, different uh, experiences. What do you know about this country? I know um, I know where it is. I know that uh, a lot of fantastic cyclists come from here. Uh, I know that you know it seems like in the last 10 years, 15 years, cycling has really uh, has really become more and more appreciated here and taken off here. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's it's difficult to to. to to know a lot about Denmark. I mean, coming from America, America and Denmark are very different places. Very different. Now, it's been uh, four days since your historic fifth uh, Tour de France win in Paris. Has it sunk in yet, what you've achieved? Um, probably not, probably not. But, I mean, now the time is to just uh, to relax and to try and recover from the Tour because it was a hard one. Um, but I, I, I guess uh, not yet, I would have to say. Did you at any uh, specific point, it was a close race this year, uh, did you at any specific point uh, fear that, that maybe you could lose it this year? Of course, I mean, it was so close at times that, uh, you know, there were, it was down to the day. I mean, if I had a bad day, uh, then the tour would be over, or at least I would lose the jersey uh, for that day. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, in order to be uh, ready to win, you also have to be ready to lose at least the possibility to that and uh, this year was was a very real possibility. Do you think next year is going to be even more difficult with uh, Tyler, his collarbone has healed, Ulrich have, will have had one more year to prepare? I know, but I made a lot of mistakes that uh, that I won't make again and for me it was almost better to have a year where uh, it was a close haircut and uh, can go back and improve on those things and try and, I mean now I'm motivated to improve on the performance of this year not necessarily I mean there's it's difficult to, to improve on winning because when you win and then you win it's the same thing but uh, I think I can improve on on this year's performance it was not it was not good enough changing the subject away from the tour <coughs> do you still feel the same way about riding your bike that you did when you were 13 20 years old uh yeah yeah I mean I still I still love it I still uh You know, you can ask my wife. I still, I still like to go out, and if I don't ride my bike for a few days in a row, then I'm not the same person. She's, you know, she's one of those things where she says, "Look, you need to go, you need to go ride your bike." Uh, last night, I read the first chapter of your new book, uh, "Every Second Counts," and it says there that you, you feel that the illness that you had, the cancer, uh, taught you a lot. What did it teach you? No, I mean these lessons were all in the first book. I mean it was this is a, a question of perspective and what uh, you know, looking at this tour, being being down, having bad days, having uh, crashes, having a lot of problems. Um, 
how you bounce back from something like that and how you respond to those, uh, those problems in life. But what it said was, I think, uh, that you thought that uh, maybe before the tour, you, you didn't give it 100%. Uh, before the, the cancer, you didn't give it 100%. You felt that, that it taught you uh, um, not to be as lazy as before? No, not to take things for granted. Um, and not to take your, your physical gifts for granted, uh, your friends and your family for granted. I mean, certain things in life you only get one chance to, to have and to enjoy. And so you know, this, is the, this is it. You know, and this is for many people. It's easy to forget that. It's easy to uh, to become lazy or to become uh, um, to become content with, with with the life that they have. But uh, you know, for me, it was it was a wake up call and an opportunity to uh, to really become a fighter. Obviously, surviving cancer, of course, changed your life, changed your body and your mind. What, what did winning the Tour de France do? Winning the tour made life uh, a lot easier. I mean, a lot easier in certain ways, but also a lot busier in uh, in, in, in most respects. I mean, life. Uh, my life the last five years has been crazy because you take the winning the tour, uh, having three children, traveling the world. You know, it's become a crazy life and a, and a hectic life. And a life in celebrity. How do you feel about celebrity? Being in the spotlight all the time. No, I mean it's it comes with uh, it comes with athletic success or uh, or many successes. You, this is part of the package. You know, if if it were up to me, I would rather uh, you know be sitting in a park with with uh, with my children and, and drinking a cold beer and relaxed and calm and nobody around. Uh, but uh, but they can't be that way. I mean, you have to if you choose this life of of a top sportsman and you want to be successful, you have to accept everything that comes with it. Finally, Lance, after you finish your cycling career, what do you imagine doing? I have no idea. No idea? I have no idea. And it's one of the, the, the things I said before that, um, you know, I'll focus on what I'm doing now. And, you know, when I get to that chapter in my life or whenever I come, it comes time to stop and to move on to something else, I'll focus on that then. But for me to sit here today as, a, as an active cyclist, and think about what I'm going to do next would be taking away from what I'm going to do today. And so uh, the good news is I don't have to do anything. I'm comfortable for the rest of my life. and uh, I thank cycling for that and thank the people for that. But um, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. It's a job. I mean, I don't think I'll get up and have a nine to five job. I'll probably just be a you know, coach my son's soccer team or something.